Affecting your relationship, not having real estate affecting your relationship, is having real estate affecting your relationship. What's going on with the real estate? What's the problem with it? I want to talk about some things. I had a phone call, came in, and I think this is probably about the fifth time this year, maybe. I've heard about real estate affecting relationships. So I decided, you know what, let's talk about it. Because too many people go through things. And if they don't have no examples of other people going through it, they'll tend to go gun ho on, on situations and rip their lives apart and don't realize. So I think about me. You know, I got up there, had a little bit of real estate in my life. And I couldn't tell nobody all the stuff I owned. I didn't have a little bit. I had a lot of it. <laughs> I had a lot of real estate. And it was like, I couldn't tell nobody because not too many people was on that level. You know, I, I decided that, you know, I'd rather have houses and apartment buildings than cars, you know, than stuff and things instead of having fat jewelry, truck jewelry and, and, and fancy super fly big luxury cars, I decided, you know what, I'd rather just have a bunch of doors. You know, if you don't know what doors mean, doors mean, uh, Sonia, how you doing? You know, doors mean income property. So if someone says, that's usually a, a term that a developer or a, a investor will use when talking to another investor. You know, when someone says, oh, I own a lot of property. And then, okay, if you own a lot of property, then you understand the term. So I'll say, well, how many doors you got? Because, you know what I'm saying? Somebody would be like, well, how many pieces of property you got? No, uh -oh. that's going to take a second. If somebody say, how many pieces of property you got? You know, I may say, uh, a person may say, Erica, how you doing? A person may say, British, how you doing? If I say I own a lot of real estate, a person may say, well, how much property you got? And they may say, I got 14 pieces of property. You know, that don't necessarily mean nothing. Kenzo, what's up, my brother? Congratulations, good brother. Time to start a business now. <laughs> you know, if someone say, TJ, how many pieces of property you got? DJ, what's going on, family? You know, I may say, oh, I own 14 pieces of property. Well, you don't understand. You may go, wow, that could be 14 houses, right? So you're like, okay, well, he owned 14 houses. Well, you don't know if they're all in Compton. 
You don't know if they're in Beverly Hills. You don't know. You don't know. They could be apartment buildings. You don't know. So if someone say, how many doors you got, that's going to tell them something about you. So if I say, oh, I own 14. No. If I say, oh, I only got uh, one apartment building. And you may think, oh, I got him beat. I got four apartment buildings, right? So your four apartment buildings mean you got four 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 plexes, right? That's 16 units. You got 16 doors. So this guy who you thought you was better than, he say, oh, I only got one, one piece of income property. But when you ask him, okay, now you dig a little deeper because you know the game like I know, you'll be like, okay, well, how many doors you got in that one piece of income property? He said, oh, I got 260 units, 260 doors. It's like, whoa. Now you realize that you only got 16 doors. He got 260. So that means this man has a property that's probably worth over $7 million for one building. And he probably bringing in a million dollars a month. You see what I'm saying? Something crazy. And you sitting there like, whoa. So that's why you got to use the right terms in real estate. You know, too many people be asking too many wrong questions. And a lot of people tell me things like they know what's going on. I'll be like, well, what's happening? What you got? You know what I'm saying? Uh, how big is your house? And they be like, oh, I got a six bedroom. And I'll be like, that don't mean nothing. You could have six bedrooms in Compton living in one, a little 800 square foot house, a thousand square foot. I want to know how many square foot is your house. Cause you may say, Oh, I got six, six bedrooms and a thousand square foot. And he may say, I may, well, I may tell you, well, I got 16,000 square foot. So immediately that let me know you serious about, it. you got some serious real estate. But anyway, so the question is today that I want to talk about, cause I got a phone call. I think this was like the fifth or sixth time this year where the real estate was about to cause divorce. Y'all hear what I just said? The real estate, it was about to cause divorce. If y'all can share this video, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? If y'all feel inclined to uh, donate a couple of dollars on Cash App or something, that'd be cool too. Money sign, Thomas TJ Lofton. You know, but you have people who who are literally waking up and realizing, oh man, I got some equity in my house. I, I could cash in. <clears throat> so I ain't trying to put nobody out there, but one of my partners called me this week, today. Another one of my partners called me two, three weeks ago. And then one of my homegirls called me a month ago. And then another one of my homeboys called me about two months ago. And everybody like, man, these real estate agents keep knocking on my door, telling my wife or her husband how much her property is worth. And they like, now they complaining because they really, people didn't really, people really don't follow how much houses or their houses worth unless they're thinking about selling. So you got people who ain't thinking about selling, but yet you got people who keep telling you, you know, these real estate agents know what they're doing, y'all. They're going around creating havoc in these neighborhoods. They catch you outside watering your grass. They ain't going to stop and talk to you and tell you how much you paid for your house and how much your neighbor just sold for their house. And you can get that because you only owe this much. Secure, how you doing, family? Mr. Smith, what's up, brother? Aaron, how you doing, family? Veronique in the house. How you doing, Veronique? Robert, what's up, bro? DJ in the house. You know, so somebody, imagine you sitting there and somebody comes up to your door and knock on your door and tell you that, uh, oh, I got a, a cash buyer that's ready. I have a cash buyer that's ready to buy your house. I was wondering, are you willing to sell it? And you say, no, I'm not thinking. I'm not really interested. Well, I, I pulled the title and I, I realized, Alicia, how you doing? Allison, I'm sorry. How you doing? Uh, I hope I pronounced it right. I know you're not interested in selling, but I just wanted to know because I realized you only owe about $30,000 on your house and you can turn around. Yeah, they really are ruthless. You can turn around and sell that house for, uh, you know, seven fifty, eight hundred thousand. You know, you can go on vacation. You can travel the world. You can go buy a condo cash in Florida. <laughs> Why not California? Why not? Can't I stay here in California? You notice how the real estate agents can't never tell you somewhere close by that you can take this little 700000 that they're telling you you can get for your house 
and you can buy some closer. Uh, YouTube, my family, y'all mind going on my YouTube page, clicking subscribe. I'm trying to get 600 more followers so I can go YouTube live on my cell phone. How about that? Ain't that crazy? Uh, I need a thousand YouTube followers. So anyway, I only got about 400 because I really wasn't using YouTube a long time ago uh, when I got started. So now you got people telling you what your house is worth. And now as soon as you have a little bit of problems and you're looking at your husband or you're looking at your wife, you like, you know what? We should just go and sell the house. It was like, no. Why would you sell the house? So you got people having this conversation regularly, and it always revolves around money. And it's like the house is always becomes the penny piggy bank. You know what I'm saying? So I got a phone call about they about to go to divorce because one person wants to sell the house just so they can tap into the money. They don't need the money. They really don't need the money. They don't need, they ain't, they ain't got nothing extra. They living in LA, house worth about $7.89, I think he told me. And the house is paid for, and they got nice cars, they got nice clothes, they got, you know, church around the corner, all their children live in the area. You know what I'm saying? Everything is great. The world is a beautiful place. And now they tell me, well, I can get the uh 750, 800 for the house, and we can walk away and take that money and uh and move to Florida, and they like, well, we can sell it. And it's like, well, what are you going to buy? What you need the money for? That's the first question you always got to ask. Stefan, how you doing, family? Why do you want to sell the house? What are you going to buy with that money? Koreans came up to my cousin's house with a suitcase full of cash. Yeah, they doing that kind of crazy stuff. You need to turn around and call the homies and say, hey, follow them. <laughs> Let me be quiet. You know what I'm saying? They do that stuff to create problems because they know black folks is having problems. So I got a, okay, let's break it down. I had a homeboy. He called me tomorrow. They about to go to divorce court because, uh, Nicole, how you doing? They about to go to divorce court because, uh, Charming, how you doing? Sean, how you doing? Sean, how you doing? They about to go to divorce court because, uh, a real estate agent told the wife how much the house is worth and how much they owe and they can move out of state and they can keep that money and enjoy life and travel the world with that money. Why is real estate agents coming up to your door telling you what you can do? That don't make no sense to me. They, they telling you you can move out of state. Why not stay here in California where you conveniently close to all your friends and family, where you co you close to the airport, where you close to the beach, where you got good weather? Why are they not telling you that? They want this area. So if they want the area so bad, tell them to break you off. Why would I want to sell my house for market value when I ain't, I don't really need the money? You know what I'm saying? You want me to sell my house for the $789? If you really want my house that bad, why don't you give me $2 million if you really want it? That's what you you got to start telling these agents. If you're really serious and y'all interested in this house, give me $2 million for the house and I'll be glad to sell it to you. And see how they act because they want your equity. So I was reading the article the other day and it came across, you know, people are always sending me stuff and I appreciate y'all for sending me these articles. You know, people be like, TJ, what does this really mean to you? And how can, what's this real twist behind this? And I'll be like, man, these articles are serious. It's most of this stuff, I can't believe they putting it out there. Marsha, how you doing? I can't believe they putting these, uh, these articles out there. So the article read, California has Los Angeles County uh, residents has $68 billion in equity in their homes. Yeah, you know what I just said? They said Los Angeles County, meaning black America, all the houses in black Los Angeles, black Los Angeles residents has a combined total of $68 billion in equity. Y'all hear what I just said? That's in 2019, before gentrification really sets off. We still at the beginning of gentrification, y'all. That's why I wrote the book again to exp better explain to us what's going on. Monetizing gentrification because gentrification, Beverly, how you doing? Gentrification is not just all about, you know, hey, I woke up and white folks is knocking on the door trying to buy my house. Gentrification is they realize your neighborhood is about to be worth a whole lot of money. So they're coming up to you trying to buy it first so that you can get put out of there and miss out on the equity train. Y'all hear what I just said? They want you to sell the property. Eric, how you doing? Jacqueline, how you doing? 
They want you to sell your property before your equity really get in there. So you thinking, oh man, my house is worth seven hundred thousand. I only paid fifty four. It's paid off, and you thinking we should cash out now before the market crashes. But the reality is the market is not going to crash and you're going to be mad because you just sold your house early. And now all of a sudden you're looking up somebody else over there tomorrow. They want $2 million for your same house. They ain't did nothing to it. They ain't did nothing to it. But you're thinking, damn, I should have never sold that house. Jacqueline Thorne, how you doing? I got Jacqueline Westbrook and Jacqueline Thorne. I know I must be important. I got two Jacqueline's on the line. Everett, Everett, how you doing, family? So. I appreciate if y'all share this video because I'm getting way too many calls. Shanette, how you doing? About TJ, what do you what do you think about this? My ex, my wife wants to file a divorce. Somebody suing me for my house. Somebody, my wife want to take equity out of the house to bail our son out of jail. The one I keep telling him to stop doing the stuff. He go and do it anyway. Then he want to call home and ask for help. So I told him I'm not gonna help him, but my wife want to take the money out the house and go bail him out. Y'all hear what I just said? Like the house is a piggy bank. Equity don't just magically appear back. Your mortgage goes up when you start pulling money out, y'all. You know, so it's like, I'm getting phone calls. Cultural tours, how you doing? I'm getting phone calls. See, when I signed up to do this, y'all, I turned around and said, my people need help because there's some amazing real estate situations going on around the country. Like in my book, I wrote about it and I took pictures to show y'all. There are some amazing real estate situations going on all around America and it's raining money right now. So I decided to travel around the country and hit these 15. I thought I was going to do 25 states when I left in uh, last April of 18. I said, you know, I'm going to hit 25 states because I want to see what's happening with this gentrification. I really want to see what's going on with it. So I'm going to go do a tour, cars and real estate. That's what I'm going to talk about. Man, I get out there and start looking at it. And I, it blew my mind. It was my wildest imaginations. I never thought of what was happening, what could happen. I never seen anything like that. And I'm a real estate guru guy. I thought I really knew real estate, but I found out I didn't know nothing about real estate. When I realized the things that these white folks or these Jews or these Koreans, these Chinese are willing to do to take our real estate. You see what I'm saying? Maurice, how you doing? To get our real estate. So I did, I went on tour. I thought I was going to do 25 states. So I only was able to do 15 because I, I realized I need to write a book. I'm going to make a documentary. I'm going to write this book. But the book came first and I realized this is just bananas out here. So I said, let me write this book so I can better help my people so that they can know what a real estate investment looks like. So that's what I put in my book, Monetizing Gentrification. I put it, if you have an order, go to my website, thomastjlofton.com, L-O-F-T-I-N, right? Monetizing Gentrification, Building Black Ownership. So I put it in the book to talk about what these investments look like. These are things that you can expect. These are things that you can capitalize in. Don't sell your house. You know what I'm saying? This is why you shouldn't sell your house. And people looked at me crazy like, wow. So now it totally. Uh-oh. Hold on one second, y'all. Hold on one second. I'll be right back with it. Hey, what's going on? Oh, tell them the gate open. Okay, I'll, I'll take care of it. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Y'all had to give me a hot second, okay? Y'all give me a hot second. I'll be right back. Y'all listen to this music. I'm going to bring it right back. Go on up that sugar and pull it at you. 
What are we teaching to you? The state of the union is the state of the union. Playing the seeds can be kicked to boost your waters for a decrease battles. Play it under the air, rebuild that. Amplify your voice, please, please don't shoot. We won't answer why everybody got cancer for the stop. It's back up, stop vaping on you. The FDA proves that on me, that is true. We won't answer all the process. The meat ain't right, the water ain't right. How's the first day we try? Stop the land. Stop being evil, God will kill that land. Are we really in need or is it the new need? I'ma tell you, like somebody told me, stay awake to the ways of the world. No green. still with me i know that was crazy something always going on make me walk away oh god how you doing shabrilia how you doing so what was that i was on uh real estate people calling me talking about they losing their house i didn't say losing their house they say the real estate agents they losing their relationship because of the houses are like piggy banks to them. You know, real estate agents is coming after them for the houses. So y'all know what, honestly, y'all, I'm gonna have to come back in and do this in a minute. I gotta return this phone call, important call real quick. I know that's crazy, but I'm gonna come right back at y'all shortly. 